Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Adventures of a Real Estate Investor. I'm Susie. And I'm Michael. We're excited you joined us for this adventure. So today's very special guest who is full of so much energy and whom I adore dearly is Mandy McAllister. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, hi. I am excited to be here and see you again, Susie. And Michael, what a pleasure to meet you. Excited for this chat today. Absolutely. Yeah. Susie said so many great things about you. So I'm really excited to finally chat with you. Finally. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and just for our adventurous family out there. So I actually met Mandy through another great woman in real estate named Cindy Byler. And Cindy was like, Hey, Susie, Mandy puts together like this greatest women's accountability group. Like you should definitely join. And I was able to join a few times, but just even being over here, like Friday night at seven o'clock. I'm like, accountability is great. I just don't know if it's great every Friday at 7 p.m., <laughs> you know? But no, I mean, even from there though, like we've had so many great chats and I love being part of like your women's Facebook group, the AWAM. And I, I know we'll get into that later because I definitely want you to, but you're just such a grace to even like the female community in real estate. So thank you. Thank you again for being here. Not be more excited. And thank you. Thank you for that. What a gift. Uh, because that's the whole thing, impacting women's lives. I know we'll get into that, but that's that's what it's all about. Absolutely. But yeah, before we dive into all that, Mandy, would you mind sharing with our listeners, you know, a little bit about your background and like why you started investing in real estate? Absolutely. So um, I grew up in a, on a farm, right? Like I was the same twenty six kids I went to kindergarten with are the same twenty six kids I graduated high school with, and then uh, in college, I was standing on the porch of a friend's house where she was living. Uh, during some party and she was explaining that her dad bought that we were standing on the porch of and she rents out the rooms to our friends shared friends and i'm like and you get to keep that money that is the best idea i've ever heard in my whole <laughs> at 19 years old this idea of like the seed was planted it must be real estate investor uh but you know a bunch of years followed of doing all the right things getting the degrees like buying the big house and all of the things happened and it wasn't that was 19 years old i didn't buy my first piece of real estate for express purpose of investment until i was 35. so uh yeah anyway got got really interested very early on and then used it pretty quickly to um find some find some freedom and left my w2 uh about 14 weeks ago now yay which is very exciting so congratulations yeah, when thank you when you initially like did, was that your plan because i know how you said like it took you a while to get into real estate but like what did that look like when you first started and you were still working sure so the 2016 is when i bought my first fourplex and you guys i was scared to death to buy a four a hundred and twenty thousand dollar fourplex like how ridiculous did that sound uh, I ended up having a conversation with someone who'd done a bunch of uh, transactions and said, oh yeah, that's a really good deal. And thought, oh my God, that's a good deal. I'm going to do it. So I did it. <laughs> and then I had a thousand dollars of cash flow. Not only did I not die having bought that asset, like I had a thousand dollars cash flow coming in every single month. And my plan was, you know, I'll have this paid off uh, within, you know, by the time my kid's going to college, I'll be able to refinance it. And that whatever I pull out, that poof, that is a tax-free college fund. And I still have a cash flowing asset, right? So that was the original plan. But then I realized, oh my gosh, it's just a math problem. That at some point, these thousand dollars a month that I don't work for will add up to more than it costs me to live my life. So it wasn't the initial goal, right? But it was like a very quickly, you know, the math was pretty easy to do once yeah. you got into it, you know? Nice. Just, just out of curiosity, I, I don't know a lot about your story. Um, and then Su Susie's mentioned to me, but like, you know, you started with a fourplex, like what did, where, where, where'd you go from there? Was it more fourplexes or more single family or did you scale or what are you into now? Yeah. I got very comfortable in the, you know, sub 10 solely owned assets, like the mm -hmm. reposition of those. Right. And you know, the, the same metrics apply in a six unit that apply in a 600 unit, right. that if you increase rents by however much you can increase the value of that property and you can pull out whatever that upside was. So I did a four and then a six, and then I bought into a passive investment of 130. And then I, you know, pretty strongly went into, um, joint ventures of the 50 ish space. And uh, so, yeah, there's scale, but I kind of like to own my own stuff or the, the most possible percent of an asset. 
So um, that, that kind of makes me feel warm and fuzzy. No, and I love that you bring that up because a lot of people, it's like big multifamily, big multifamily, big multifamily. And you're really like rocking the, I don't want to say small because 50 is still really big. But when I say, when I say big, I mean like 100 plus, right? Where property management can be there 100% of the time. So when you own it all on your own, like what does that do for you? Because I mean, for each person, it's going to be a different feeling. And so I'm just really curious because to stay in that space is still phenomenal. Like to be able to JV everything, I would love to be able to JV everything, you know? And so I'm just wondering, like, what's that like? And like how you want to continue to do it? Yeah. I will say that the 50 ish unit space, we've, we've had a lot of success. Uh, you know, the benchmark usually is exactly like you said, a hundred units, you have somebody on site all the time. Well, an interesting kind of play is that 50 unit. We partnered with a group who owns, uh, well, the property manager we use also owns their own stuff, not that far away. And we just split the time. So we have somebody on site two or three days. Uh, a week. So like that gives us e the equal amount of like eyes on the property really without really giving up too much. But we were able to buy an asset that we were uber competitive in because not everybody's looking at 50 unit properties. Right. So I will say I, um, I teach a course for, you know, the invest her network and, yeah. uh, uh, our, our shared friends, we were talking about this. And one of the things that one of the big downfalls, like, I think there's a ton of advantages to owning a larger proportion of assets. Cause I'm, I call myself kind of like an equity hog, you know, <laughs> but, but, but the hard part is the property management stuff. Cause if you own, you know, a six flex, you take your eyes off of it for too long, you know, stuff's going to go down. Like they don't care about it because it's such a small percentage of what it is that they do. You better own something close enough that you can inspect what you expect is what I always tell people. So the inspect what you expect, do you mean by that? Like going to the property? Oh yeah. hundred percent. So let me tell you a little, little story. Okay. <laughs> so I kind of took my eyes off the ball on my six, on, on a six unit. Uh, in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And, you know, the property manager, like they're, they're, they're oh, kind Kenosha. people. Yeah. Like Kenosha, Kenosha. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't watch the news. And um, I, I, anyway, long story short, like yeah, sorry. the bad stuff went down like a block for me. Right. But anyway, I took my eyes off that ball and um, poof, I, I have a, a drug dealer in there. Right. So, uh, what and it's because like it's now an hour and a half from where I live, so it's not a place that I'm getting all the time, you know. So uh, now, like I've, uh, I've I hung up a um, I've I contacted the 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 police and now I'm working with them, whatever. But I hung up a uh, sign next to the mailboxes in every entry that says um, we've partnered with Kenosha PD to uh, you know that they we volunteered this property so that they can train their canine unit in and around the property. So, <laughs> that is yada awesome. yada yada. The bad guys are moving out, you know. So yes. that worked out pretty well. No, so like with then though, because I know you do so much more. Like I would love for you to go deeper because real estate isn't obviously all just about you know like hopefully not getting horrible. Um, I don't want to say tenants. What we're doing to use right now. Residence. Residence. Thank you. I'm like, I'm really trying not to, why can't I figure that out? But like, <laughs> right, yeah. or like not having property management there, having it work, like there's so much more to it, which is how I met you. So like from this space, like where were you feeling that like either there was a lack of women or you wanted to make a group or how did that all come to life? Yeah. I mean, doing right by people in the place that they live or residence, like it's absolutely one way to like, that juices me. Right. But it's not, I don't love real estate because like, oh my God, you guys got to see these new floors. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not, that's not me, right? It's the chance to impact my my residents' lives, right? Because it yeah. pro provide them a really great place to live. And then the scary neighbor get that scary neighbor kicked out. But like, it, it's my vehicle to freedom, right? Like yeah. that is why I love real estate. I'm, the, I'm a single mom to a five and a half year old little guy. And I was able to leave my W-2 job. So now I'm, I get them off the bus every day. Oh, like that level cool. of, of, 
right? Mm -hmm. The impact on my own life, the impact on where I'm taking my sons in my life that we, we have adventure days every other week. You know, it's kind of like, have you seen that movie, uh, Yes Day? Uh, it's like, okay, well, what do you want to do? What do you like? It, and it occurred to me, like walking out of the gym one day that like we, there's water slides in our gym, uh, in the pool. And he's like, mom, let's go. And I'm like, no, baby, we can't do it. Whatever. And like, I told him no, like five times in a row. I'm like, you know what? We're going to go. Like, like, why, why not? Like, we got the time we got the, and now like, he's like, he'll remember back. Like, mom, do you remember when we went on the water slides and you were the only mom on the water slide? I'm like that. That is why cash flow, that is why passive income is so incredibly yeah. worth banging tables about because of that type of memory that I'm getting to provide for my kid. But to speak to the women's part of things, you know, in commercial real estate, you know, I, I started like what, call it five years ago or so. Every time I would go to something, like there was one or two women there. And like you, you, you see somebody that's like, you're like, hey. You want to right? Can we be friends? Are we, you want to friends? Be friends? Hi. Yeah. I'm being yeah. really nice. Let's do this. Right. Yeah. So kind of like a few of us started a book club and then we realized it was literally two years ago. I just, Facebook told me a oh. reminder yesterday, okay. it was two years ago today that okay. the aspiring women achieving more Facebook groups started. And I, I thought like, wow, there's, there's gotta be more people that want to band together that, you know, yeah real estate is an incredible vehicle to find freedom, but this being a whole person first, that the, the, my learning, my banding together to have really great relationships, my giving back to the community, my, you know, having a really great life for my family, that's what matters first. And then real estate kind of second. Uh, so a book club became aspiring women and now it's 2,600 members on Facebook. Wow. Yeah. And that's phenomenal. And you know, like, so I use this example a lot, even just in snowboarding. So like when I started snowboarding again, I just started like going down hills that were way too intense for me, right? Like I could do step one and two. I wasn't doing three through five and then just trying to get to 10. But like, I see that a lot in real estate where people aren't focusing on themselves first. They just go straight into the world and like the business side to try to conquer that. But like, not realizing that if they were to work on themselves first, they would be so much more successful on the business side. So like, how, how do you see people or even just women, I guess, like transforming how, I mean, cause men, it can, they could easily transform as well, but obviously this group is for women, which is amazing. So like, how do you even get that through some people's head? Cause some people could also see as like it going backwards. And so I can, I feel like it could be difficult sometimes. I think that men and women kind of communicate differently, that we learn differently, that we're, you know, if you look at evolution, whatever, like our brains haven't caught up with like, since we were hunter gatherers, right? So men, the hunters of our species, like you go kill the first antelope you see, and then you, you don't have to talk. You just go do that and you're done, right? And if you kill one antelope, you don't have to go look for another antelope, right? Which that's why men can't see the mustard behind the ketchup because they found the first antelope and they're done, right? <laughs> Women, like we are so like communicative, like things happen in a community, you know? Like we need to talk about like if the, if the bear, okay, the berries that you're trying to get, Susie, like you got to go down by the water and make sure that they're the black ones and not the blue ones because the ones in the middle of the patch, like they're really sour. And those ones <laughs> over there by the trees are going to kill you. We have to like throw up all kinds of information in order to get our jobs done. Like that's how we evolved. So in my opinion, the, because the leaders in like the guru space of, of multifamily acquisition, like it's, it's very man heavy, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the chance to be in a spot that you're learning from someone who communicates like you, you're learning in a safe place where you're not going to be the, the only one who looks like you standing up asking a question that you're worried is stupid, right? Because you're newer, like a chance to be, you know, learning as you go with other women in this communal space. Like that's, that's really the, the vision, the goal of all of this. So um, that, that's how it came about. And that's kind of the vision of where it's going. No, I love that. Did you see like a huge increase in women, like when the lockdown started? Or when did um, you see it like kind of shoot off? Cause you know, like one person could share it and then it's like, oh, wait a second, how did 150,000 people also just see this? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I, you know, I'm seeing, I feel like we're in the middle of something electric right now, you know? And I, 
I don't, it might be COVID related. It might be, you know, this, the, the great resignation. If you've heard that so many people leaving their jobs because of COVID, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm part of it. You Me know. too. So, so okay. yeah, right. Hey, <laughs> enough, girl. Yeah. <laughs> idea that there's, there's more to life. We were, we were forced to pause. We were forced to like really get introspective inside of our own four walls, figuring out what is it that's important to me? And is it, you know, schlepping to make sure that, you know, this, that so, so-and-so gets the, the, the rebuild because that device got dropped and Dr. So-and-so needs me here at 6 a.m. and I can't figure out childcare. No, that's, that is not the way I want to live my life. I'm going to go live my own dream. And I, a lot of other women and everyone, uh, men, women, everyone, but especially women are figuring that out right now, in my opinion. I think so too. And I think it's pretty important just because like, yes, so many bad things like happened out of COVID and the lockdowns, but now so many good things have happened, right? Like I love seeing a lot of people who were able to like have that time with their families or with their friends or with their children. And now they're realizing, hey, like I really need to make this change now or else who knows when I'll be able to make the change, right? Because like the fire is happening now. And so that's really awesome. And I've seen a lot of people be able to like leave their traditional nine to five, which makes me really happy inside because when we're all doing something where we're fired up, like it makes a mm -hmm. big difference on what we're giving back to the world. Whatever energy you show up with, I completely agree. And I want to, I want to say something to that point too, this idea of leaving your job. Like if you, anybody listening, if you're like on the precipice, if you're like right there trying to decide if you want to be leaving your job or not to take a stab at this full-time entrepreneurism, but I'm going to really encourage you to look at it a different way. Like I sometimes call myself a mindset ninja because like a little bitty shift can change everything, yeah. you know? So the way that I chose to start looking at this self-employment thing, sure, I had a financial number I was looking for that I hit. Sure, I realized that if I sat still in this chair uh, for a little bit longer that I could achieve greater goals. But here is the thing that made all the difference in the world. I'm just treating it like a year-long experiment. Hmm. So after 12 months, what is the actual worst case scenario? The actual worst case scenario is that I, not that I'm living penniless under a bridge with my kid, it's that I find another sales job. So in 12 months time, I'm going to reassess, right? I'm not retired forever. I'm 40 years old. Maybe I decide I want to go sell medical devices again. I don't know, but I'm going to reassess in a year and it takes all the pressure off. No, and it absolutely does. And I like that you say you reassess because a lot of people think that it's like, oh no, this is the like end all. If I do this, I'll never be able to go back. But like, there won't be a gap on your resume because you'll be working on your business the entire time. And because like we all need to be challenged and we all grow differently. Like it makes a big difference why you go back into the world or where you end up in different places. You know, like if you are yearning to like learn something new, then that's totally okay. You know, like challenges are needed for all of us. And that's where the optimal growth occurs. I would not agree more. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of different things that kind of presented themselves during COVID for sure. Um, and it's just really awesome to hear that a lot of people were able to to take advantage of that. Um, what I want to dive in a little bit more is, you know, AWAM, right? So inspiring mm -hmm. women, achieving, achieving more. more. Um, on the, it's a Facebook group, correct? And, uh, largest, yeah. Okay. And then like, so what, what kind of conversations go on there? Like, I know you said it started like a book club, whatever, but like, what else? Can you dive in a little bit more? Like, so if our listeners are out there and they're like, well, that's not something that's, that could be interesting for me. Like, um, what kind of things, what kind of, um, things you do on there? What kind of conversations are you having? Things like that. Yeah, sure. So the, the primary, like into the real world thing that we did that Susie was talking about that she joined a bunch of times was our Friday accountability groups. So that was something that we have for a year and a half just did for for free we just all got together mm -hmm. what are the things you're working on did you hit any speed rock bumps and what do you want to be held accountable for the next time that we talk and the the level of move things forward that we were able to see that because of that group just because of women getting together and talking about the stuff that they're working on and oh you're doing short-term rentals you need to meet this person she's killing it in this way and she can maybe yeah. give you some tips right? And, oh, you're having trouble, you know, underwriting, like, you know, 
you gotta you gotta talk to our girl Camilla. She's running an underwriting club. What whatever that is, like the the chance to come together and really actually there was um, two women, Eric Neal and Karen Azer. They wrote a book called Mind of Gold. They met because of our group, right? And it's just like so many cool things are happening. Um, we've also started courses. So our our shared friend Camilla Jeffs under the Aspiring Women Achieving More kind of label is teaching an underwriting club to, you know, especially here's why we got there. Cause you know, in the education space, like people pay 30 grand yeah. to be part of things. And I mean, I, I've been part of things. So, you, you know, you've been part of things. Camilla's been part of things. And lots of times, like in my opinion, like the thing that matters most is the number, right? In anything, you know, uh, investing, but especially in multifamily, right? Like, because it's, it's just, what is your NOI? And you apply a gap and you got the value, right? So you have to know how to get those numbers buttoned up. And lots of times you'll hear people say, oh, I don't underwrite, I outsource that. No, you better at least know what you're yes. talking about and have an idea of why you're going to be picking that exit cap. Because if, if it's this, like then your number and your projections don't matter. What you're selling to passive investors is scary, frankly. So, you know, let's button up and do some reps on underwriting. So things that we really try to identify an issue that is under addressed and try to, you know, help train around it in a, um, you know, affordable uh, way. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to add to that real quick is just, I hear that so many times that people are like, oh, I'm outsourcing this, I'm outsourcing that, I'm outsourcing underwriting. I'm like, why are you outsourcing underwriting? The one thing that is going to make or break your deal and you don't understand the numbers, you do not need to be a syndicator, to be completely honest, or closing on JV deals because that is so scary. If you do not understand how the numbers work and, and the inputs and the outputs, everything goes on between, especially like how much is growth every single year, just when you, when you see underwriting models in there too, it's like, you know, 15, 20% uh, growth in the first year. I'm like, holy God, that is huge. Yeah. Right. And you're, like, yeah. and you're trying to get to 95% occupancy in year one. Yeah, sure. Um, it's just like all that thing is like, well, you know, that's what, that's what we were provided through our, uh, outsourced underwriting. You're like, oh my God. So that is just blows my mind. Number one. Uh, and I forgot a second point, but okay, uh, the second I love Sorry. when, oh, I, okay. I love in underwriting sometimes like, oh, we're going to do a $10,000 renovation per unit. And we're going to have no vacancy that whole first year, but we're going to achieve that ideal rent in year one, 100%. Yeah. No freaking way. Do you know what you're looking at, bro? Like, do you have any idea? Like, yeah. explain to me why you think that this is in truth, that this is rooted in something that might actually happen. And until you understand the reality, the truth of something, then you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, execute it. Yeah. And my second point, I remembered it now. The second point is like, if you were like, a lot of people end up bringing, you know, capital and, and coming on to the deal, um, to bring capital and, and of course, you know, some other things along with the deal. Um, and they don't know how to underwrite. I think everybody who is in real estate needs to know how to underwrite, right? And so like, it's very scary. Like you just blindly trust the operator that you're partnering with to just kind of like, oh yeah, I blindly trust them. They know what they're doing and I trust their underwriting, right? Like you need to be able to look at the numbers and digest it, underwrite it yourself and then be able to field questions from your own investors and not just pawn them off onto the, onto the operator. Um, right. I think that's very scary too. Absolutely. And I, you I need think, to be able to call BS, like recognize yeah. BS so you can call BS. And if you don't, if you haven't put in the work, if you haven't put in the reps, then you're not going to be able to recognize it. Yeah. This is a great example too, even going back to the snowboard thing where like people want to be at like eight, nine and 10, but they don't, they skip the middle part, yeah. which is totally okay. Well, not okay. Yeah. But something I want to talk about that you brought up just we don't have to talk about it quickly, but when we think of support initially, we think it's like our spouse or our friends or our family. And a lot of times, like people don't go on to do these dreams because one person in that circle, they talk to them about it. And they were like, why would you do that? Like soul crushing words. Right. And this is really what I would love the listeners to pick up is that like, so we all want support. We just need it in different spaces. Like you will find a group of people who will support you. Yes, deep down, you really might want 
like your friends and family, you know, who aren't in the same space to support you and get it. But like, I don't get every single thing that all of my friends and family do. So if I don't get it, like I can't 100% support them. But like when you find a group like this, where everybody has like similar goals and dreams, you know, like real estate investing, like to get that like time freedom or whatever it looks like for them, like you have that support behind you the entire time. And that changed so much for me when I felt like I had a group, even though I had not known them, you know, for more than a year that were like cheering me on. And I was like, wait a second, like this does exist. And other people know it makes sense. Like just because it doesn't make sense in your immediate sphere right away does not mean it won't make sense to a different sphere. And like, yeah, I mean, so much more can go into that, but I'm just telling you like the support that this group even gives and other groups do it too, you know, but it's like just finding that group where the support is there changes everything. Because when that one person finally does say like, no, you can do it. Like you get so much more excited. Well, the only reason I did that first four flex is because someone who knew what they were doing said, yes. And I, I mean, I had no idea if that someone knew what they were doing, but they had done more transactions than me. So what I want to, I want to say a couple of things on what you said, because that's so incredibly true. Cause your family might be trying to protect you, yes. right? Because uncle Joey's friend from like business school who bought some section eight houses and lost a bunch of money. Like he's probably uncle Joey's probably trying to protect you when he's like, no, don't buy real estate. Well, no, there's, there's thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people who do really great things and make lots of money and find freedom investing in real estate. So get around the people who are doing what it is that you want to do. Yeah. yeah. Cause it makes a huge difference. And you literally achieve so much more. <laughs> Barry women. Right? Yeah. yeah that's right. That's right. That's right. I like how we brought that, that together. <laughs> so for say, we love to chat with you all night, Mandy. Um, however, we are coming towards the end of the show. But before we end the show, we have four exploratory questions we ask all of our guests. So for our listeners out there, stay tuned because Manny's going to tell you how to find that awesome Facebook group at the end. But before that, we're going to have, we have four questions for you. So the first question is, where is one place you wish to travel to and why? Ooh. Um, I, okay. So my little guy is five years old. We have had au pairs from mostly Germany for every single year of his life. So there's five, four girls that live in Germany now cool. that we, I, in my mind's eye, we're going to spend a bucket list, like month. Uh, bebop in between seeing them just because, you know, we've learned their culture with them here. And now this chance to see them, you know, five, 10 years later after they lived with us with their own families and lives. God, I can't wait for that. Right. And I bet they would love that too. Like watching him, like in a grown girl, I guess in an older form, like how precious. (laughs) Uh, It's, it's, uh, I can't wait for that memory. That's cool. So our second question is what is the number one thing on your bucket list and how are you leveraging real estate investing to achieve it? Hmm. So, you know, I crave impact. Like if you've read Think and Grow Rich, Susie, if you haven't read Think and Grow Rich for women, the distinctions are really cool, right? One of them is that women really crave impact in this even greater way. Like more than dollars, they crave impact. And I, that describes me in a really significant way. So the, you know, I talked about like, I love real estate because it's this means to a freedom. Um, I want to be, I want to be the field trip mom. Like, I I can't wait, you know, I can't wait to be handing out like orange slices, like at the field museum after we looked at dinosaurs with, you know, trying to keep my kid from picking his nose, you know? (laughs) No, I really like that. And like, that's phenomenal. One, I can totally see you do it, but like how excited you are right now. Like that's the even better part. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. So the third question, Mandy is. What is one piece of advice you have for someone who wants to start passively investing in real estate? So I, you know, I, um, kind of going through all of this, like I I do some teaching stuff too. And a lot of people like think that the glory is in the active investing, you know, but I, I feel like some people look at passive investing, like, like, oh, well, no, that's, that's, that's giving up. Like that's some sort of a dirty word to say passive in that. No, like you get to pay somebody to do all of that work for you. (laughs) You get to take away like 70 or 80% of the upside if you're the person putting in the money. So 
don't treat it like it's a dirty word. I will say kind of as a, you know, 3D there um, to passively invest in a deal because I didn't want to uh, mess with my own liquidity because I did also want to do active stuff when I first started. Uh, I self-directed an IRA from a former employer. And that's something that's still allowable under uh, under current law. So consider self-directing an IRA to dip a toe in water if you don't want to mess with your own liquidity. Love that's it. not a dirty word, you know? It's not a dirty word. I like it. Yeah, because I mean, like, we hope to be passive, you know, 100% passive. So yeah, like- That's the ultimate goal. Right? <laughs> one, more, one more thing on that too. Like, um, so I joined a, a mastermind called GoBundant. It's tribe of millionaires. It's the, literally, it's no joke, the best thing I've ever done for my life. I feel like you're given two arms for a reason. One to, you know, pull other people up, but one to pull yourself up. Yeah. I remember to pull other people up. And that's kind of what I feel like aspiring women has been, this chance to like impact other people. But the pulling myself up, like I get to sit at the same table with people whose businesses are valued at $12 billion. I get to sit at the same table with people who have, you know, uh, nine and 10 figure net worth. You know, and they're just people and it's a chance to learn from them. So in the, that's one of the um, big groups that people talk about um, how they moved their net worth into this, you know, seven, eight, nine digit sphere. One recurring theme keeps coming up and it's, they stay in their zone of genius and they let other people do the investing stuff for them. So they hand their money over to people who are trusted syndicators in many cases, and they put them that money to work for them. So if you have money to invest, that is the ideal situation. Stay in your zone of genius and give that money to people who know what it is that they're doing that are trustworthy. I love it. And yeah, we we finally meet the requirements for that. Susie's actually going to apply for that in, in January. Oh my God, we got to talk. <laughs> yeah. So no BS, best thing I've ever done for my life. Yay. That's cool. And so that is awesome. Number one. Number two, the, what you just described about reaching up and reaching down, we have a thing that we always like to say is like, you want to be a, a barrel full of monkeys, not a bucket full of crabs. And so, you know, you play a barrel full of monkeys and you can attach all of them together, right? <laughs> you're reaching up as they're reaching down. And so like real estate investors are like a barrel full of monkeys, right? Yeah. But bucket full of crabs, crabs try to crawl out and the other crabs yeah. just pull them down, right? So, yeah. I love, love it. it. <laughs> so our fourth and final question is, if you had unlimited resources available to you, how would you leave an impact? Oof. Um, you know, one thing that keeps kind of running through like this impacting women thing, like I, I've never been like this bang a table feminist, whatever, but like this, I, if you see it, you can be it, you know, and this opportunity to have choice that I have in my life. I mean, I'm a single mom, right? And my, my husband's a good man, but I had choice because I had money figured out. You know what I mean? I, and I, I don't think, I don't think that's afforded to a lot of women. So if there was a way that I, I could figure out to, you know, financial literacy for women in a bigger way to be able to make better choices or have more freedom choices in their lives in a more sustainable systemic way, that's what I would do with unlimited funds. I love, I love that. that. Yeah. I, I feel, yeah, that. I have a, I feel like I have a lot of women in my, in my life who are in that certain, that circumstance right now, right? Like where they can't leave, leave because they feel stuck because of finances. Right. So like if they had, if they were financially free, um, or if they had, you know, some additional passive investments, maybe they could walk away from the bad situation that they're in. So that it's just, how do you live more true to yourself? And if you get money figured out, then you get to be as authentic to yourself as you could possibly be because yeah. you're not, you never have to sell out because you have to sell your time in order to live. Yeah, absolutely. And people just, sorry, just go into that. Or just, just to add to that, it's like, people are like, oh, money doesn't solve problems. And like, yes, but it allows you more freedom to do a lot of the things in, like you said, to be authentic, right? Because you're not out there trading your time for money. So that's yeah. exactly it. Yeah, so. Um, Mandy, it's been such a pleasure. Um, and yeah, but but before we end the show, would you mind sharing with our listeners, the Adventurous family, how they can find this amazing Facebook group and how they can find out more about you? Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, Mandy McAllister.com is a catch all for all of the things that I, that I work on. So, um, You'll find information on Good Fortune Capital, which is my investing arm, and also all the social links for aspiring women achieving more. 
Perfect. Awesome. And those Love will it. definitely be in the show notes. So check them out because Mandy is awesome. But Mandy, thank you. Thank you again for joining us. It truly is always a pleasure. And I just cannot wait until we get to chat again. Oh, same here. Thank you for this, guys. What a yeah. gift. It was awesome meeting you, finally chatting with you. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you too. Yeah. Until next time, explore more adventure awaits. Woo!